It's, it's my understanding that we have votes at 10.30 and, uh, uh, to, and to accommodate Senator Leahy, I believe we have to get done here by 10.30 and to accommodate him because of his working so hard on the, on the CREATES Act. I hope that we can move along. Uh, I hate to tell you that because my statement's not necessarily so short. Um, and then we have Senator Feinstein's got important things to bring before the committee as well. Uh, today we intend to vote on three judicial nominees and important legislation. The minority request uh, we will hold over for one week the nominees to the Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board. We don't have enough uh, members present to do that at this point. I'll announce that later. Today, along with several other nominees, we're voting on the nomination of Georgia Supreme Court Justice Britt Grant. Uh, that's to the 11th Circuit. Justice Grant is a well-respected judge and public servant. Since joining the bench, she has a clear record of being fair and impartial. In five different cases, she ruled for criminal defendants when she found their sentences uh, did not match the law. In each case, she ordered the lower court to correct the errors, regardless of whether it is a criminal defendant or the state of Georgia. Every individual is equal under the law when they come to Justice Grant's courtroom. She also previously served as uh, Georgia's Solicitor General and clerk for the D.C. Circuit. I have confidence that she'll make a, a very good uh, appellate judge, and I, obviously I'll be supporting her. On today's agenda, uh, we have uh, just... On today's agenda and ready for a vote is uh, Oklahoma Supreme Court Justice Patrick Wyrick. Before his appointment to the o Oklahoma Supreme Court, Justice Wyrick served as Oklahoma's first Solicitor General where he argued and won a case before the United States Supreme Court. He also clerked for a federal judge on the same court to which Justice Wyrick uh, is now being nominated. And uh, I want uh, Democratic members to know that I did receive and re read your letter yesterday asking for a delay of uh, the vote on Justice Wyrick because the American Bar Association has not yet issued its rating for him. Uh, my opinion, the ABA has had plenty of time to perform its evaluation and I've said so many times that outside groups can't dictate the committee's schedule. I'm skeptical of the usefulness of the ABA. Uh, Democrats seem to have the same skepticism considering they have voted on a party line uh, against numerous nominees who receive well-qualified ratings from the ABA, including Andy Oldham, uh, John Nalbandon, uh, James Ho, Don Willips and Kyle Duncan. Uh, Democrats have voted against a number of well-qualified women and minority candidates. It seems that the ABA's ratings are used only as a political weapon by the minority. Well-qualified ratings are ignored when Democrats already oppose the nominee, but non-ratings or not qualified ratings are used against clearly qualified nominees such as newly appointed Eighth Circuit Judge Stephen Graz. Each member of this committee has had the opportunity to vet Justice Wyrick and has enough information to form their opinions. I think it's clear that regardless of uh, the ABA's opinion, Justice Wyrick is highly qualified to serve on the district court. Uh, he has the support of his colleagues on the Oklahoma Supreme Court, also from current and former state solicitors general who worked with Justice Wyrick when he held that office and many members of the Oklahoma legal community. Accordingly, uh, we will uh, bring his nomination up today. We will be uh, voting on uh, the Prevent Drug Diversion Act. Last week, this committee voted to approve a manager's amendment and an amendment by Senator Lee 
Uh, we didn't have a quorum, so we couldn't successfully report the bill. I hope that today all members of the committee will remain so that we can have the necessary quorum uh, to vote on all of our agenda. Five other opioid-related bills have already been reported to the floor, and with this bill we will have successfully worked together in a bipartisan way to move important legislation out of our committee. I'm glad that we're considering the CREATES Act. I really uh, like to thank uh, Senator Leahy, Senator Klobuchar, and Senator Lee for working on this bill with me from the very beginning. This bill targets abuses that undermine free market competition and the integrity of the Hatch-Waxman Act. Uh, it uh, allows for disputes over drug samples to be litigated under a clear and narrowly tailored legal pathway in federal court. The CREATES Act will actually send more parties to the bargaining table instead of the courtroom by improving and streamlining existing uh, litigation uh, options. The Congressional Budget Office estimates that the CREATES Act would save federal programs about $3.8 billion by increasing generic drug competition and associated cost savings. Savings to the consumers and private insurers likely would be far greater. The CREATES Act is a conservative market-based solution. I wouldn't support legislation that encourages frivolous lawsuits, uh, jeopardizes patient safety, or undermines intellectual property rights. The only remedy available to the generics is injunctive relief and specified damages, which is within the discretion of the judge based on what is necessary to deter future misconduct. This is absolutely not a trial lawyer's windfall. Moreover, this bill was drafted not to punish branded drug uh, manufacturers acting in good faith, but to establish an effective deterrent for improper behavior. My co-sponsors and I have worked closely with the FDA and the Federal Trade Commission to ensure that legislation is effective at reducing prescription drug prices. The uh, CREATES Act is also consistent with the goals of uh, Secretary of HHH, uh, Ezer, and uh, FDA Commissioner Gottlieb to uh, fight abuses in the system and address the high cost of prescription drugs. We've received wide outside support for the group ranging from Freedom's Works to Public Citizen. We have Alden Abbott, the Acting General Counsel for the FTC and former Senior Legal Fellow at the uh, Heritage Foundation describing the CREATES Act as a win-win for free market drug market competition and for the American consumers. Without objection, I'd put that record or that letter in the record. Um, I'm going to offer a manager's amendment which makes several technical changes based on feedback from the FDA and FTC as well as concerns raised by Bio and Pharma. Among other things, the amendment adds definition for commercially reasonable market-based terms verified, verifies that the sale of samples in accordance with the bill will not be a violation of REMS, clarifies the limitation of liability language, and ensures that any shared system REMS waivers maintain the same level of safety. Last item, the Kiwi Act will be held over again for one week while the bill's sponsors continue to resolve outstanding issues. We, have to hold over the noms. Uh, we got enough here to hold over the, um, the noms that I uh, had uh, stated, and so they'll be held over. Now, Senator Feinstein. 